Coming up. In the midst of World War II, after finding out his father was murdered by the Gestapo, an RAF pilot goes on a hunt for revenge, fueled by his hatred for the Germans. This famous Belgian embarks on an unapproved and rogue mission in his Hawker Typhoon to attack the men who tortured and killed his father. In this episode, we will dive into the famous solo attack of the Gestapo headquarters in Brussels. First, a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. If you want access to behind the scenes videos and bonus content, please check out the Patreon link in the description. Enjoy. Baron Jean de Lessy Longchamp was a man of determination and strength. Born in Brussels, Belgium in 1912 to a respected family, Jean was filled with immense love and pride for his country from a young age. The Baron would grow up to be a member of the Belgian Army's cavalry unit, but when Belgium surrendered to the Germans, he escaped from Dunkirk and fled to England with the British Expeditionary Force. He soon heard about the efforts to establish a new Belgian army in France, and decided to return to join their ranks. However, with the Franco-German armistice dissolving, he was a man on borrowed time. There, he came across a group of Belgian pilots who were seeking their own asylum in England, but they were going through Morocco instead. Before either party was able to escape to safety, they were discovered by authorities who sent them to a POW camp in France. Clever and as determined as ever, the Baron escaped the clutches of the POW camp and was finally able to reach England. Jean was filled with fury and knew exactly how to make good use of it. Although at the age of 28, Jean was technically too old to be enlisted for flight training, this was merely a small technicality that the Baron was able to work around. Presenting forged papers to the Royal Air Force, he was accepted into the pilot training program and was thrown into action right away. By September of 1941, he was assigned to the 609 Squadron of the RAF, a famous squadron featuring a cast of foreign volunteers, including many Belgians like himself. The squadron would be one of the first to use the Hawker Typhoon, a powerful and highly successful single-seat fighter that was armed with 20mm cannons and 303 machine guns. Throughout his training, he earned a reputation as an able yet aggressive pilot. He had success flying the Typhoon and also carried a strong enthusiasm for fighting back against Hitler and the German invaders. Jean had more than enough reason to hate the Gestapo and the SS. Not only had they taken over his home country of Belgium, but they had done unspeakable actions to his father. The senior member of his family was held prisoner by the Gestapo and killed in their custody. He died from violent and extreme methods of torture. This would fuel the Baron's hatred and taste for revenge. Burning with passion, the Baron was desperate for a chance to strike the Germans that sat in his occupied home country. But his requests were repeatedly denied. He put together a detailed and well thought out plan that was submitted to his superiors, but it always fell on deaf ears. Eventually, he would decide to simply do it himself. With the hot-headed pilot blocked from leading raids in Belgium, he decided to take matters into his own hands and planned to launch an unauthorized attack on Brussels. But it was not just any plan that he was putting together. He wanted to hit a specifically personal target in Brussels as revenge for his deceased father. By 1940, the Germans had taken over a tall, distinctive building at number 453 Avenue Louise and turned it into the headquarters of the SS security police as well as the Gestapo office of the city. The Baron knew the area around the building well as he had grown up in Brussels after all. The rows in that part of the city were wider Paris-style boulevards and the target was much taller than the buildings around it, standing out in comparison. So, on January 20th of 1943, Jean's plane took off from the RAF base in Manston, Kent, England, accompanied by his wingman, Flight Sergeant Blanco. The two pilots were on a rhubarb mission, a small-scale defensive attack against targets of opportunity. This mission in particular was directed to attack the railway junctions in Belgium near the city of Gant, which just so happened to be fairly close to Brussels, the location of the Gestapo building that he wanted to attack. Jean made sure his aircraft was armed and packed with weapons to the brim, carrying the Union Jack and dozens of small Belgian flags that he intended to drop on his home city during the attack that he planned. The Baron and Sergeant Blanco took off and headed for their target. Upon arriving, they went to work and gunned down the railways, effectively completing their assigned mission. 
they dealt damage to multiple rail cars and locomotives within the city. With their target and gaunt destroyed and the mission a success, the Baron ordered Sergeant Blanco to return to England, determined to bear the brunt of his unauthorized mission himself. This was something Jean wanted to do on his own. Immediately, he punched in a course for Brussels just 50 kilometers away. The single Hawker Typhoon dashed across the German-occupied country, keeping close to the ground to avoid detection by German radar that would have led to possible retaliation against him from fighters. The sleek aircraft was perfect for covert, low-flying missions exactly like this one. Shortly, he saw Brussels on the horizon. Following the landmarks to the Avenue Louise, his plane tore down the wide road as he lined his sights on a tall building. His target was very easy to spot as he knew exactly where it would be. He clenched his teeth and focused his aim, fingers hovering above the trigger. With a final sharp breath, he slammed down on the trigger, sending hundreds of cannons and machine gun bullets ripping into the Gestapo headquarters. His gunfire sprayed through several floors of the building before the Hawker Typhoon rose again, screaming through the sky above the building. He dealt a deadly blow to the structure, raining fire upon the Gestapo and SS soldiers and personnel inside, while also doing very minimal damage to the civilian houses surrounding it. Immediately after that, his Hawker Typhoon pulled off, screaming through the sky above the building. He then pushed the stick and opened the canopy of his fighter, where he would immediately lean out of the Hawker Typhoon, dropping his Belgian flags all over the city. He also made sure to fly over two individual points where he would drop a single flag each. First, the royal palace within the city, followed by a personal location, the garden at the house of his niece. The Baron had won, finally avenging the death of his father. The attack would kill the chief of Gestapo secret police as well as at least four other SS officials. Some German reports even have the kill count as high as 30 total casualties in the attack. The Baron flew home with a satisfied grin on his face, only to be met by a stern and icy greeting from RAF superior officers who were not happy with this venture. He was effectively demoted for disobeying direct orders and acting on his own. But then, the tone of his superiors would actually change a few weeks later, as he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his service, and more specifically for his own rogue attack. This famous mission would be one of the most blatant and brilliant displays of personal vengeance and determination in the Second World War. Although he went against the wishes of his superiors, he took the risk upon himself and made sure to deal a vengeful blow to the Gestapo stationed in his home country. Very few men in the entire conflict showed a more powerful and passionate determination to deal a personal blow to the enemy. Unfortunately, the Baron's celebratory stride would be short-lived. Just seven months later, in August of 1943, Jean returned to RAF Manston after completing a mission over Ostend, Belgium. While landing his plane, the Baron would crash and be killed instantly in his famous Hawker Typhoon. While his famous mission was not approved at the time, Baron Jean de Lissy Longchamp's bravery would be forever remembered. Today, nestled in the shadow of a certain tall, distinct building in the heart of Brussels, a statue of the Baron was erected to commemorate his extraordinary solo mission at number 453 Avenue Louise. I hope you enjoyed this historical recreation. Please consider subscribing and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my content, please check out the Patreon link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.